Morrissey's hairstyles. Over the years, in 1988, Morrissey was rocking about one inch. Just making Bill, your what? Bill, let me in, dude. Uh, come in. Bill. What? Oh, God, thank God you're here. What oh, are you man. doing? What, what's, what's the that, matter what with you? That? What are you doing right now? I'm, I'm just making notes. Next podcast is going to be Morrissey's hairstyles over the years. But it's been exactly the same hairstyle. It's going to be a five-second podcast. You'd think listen, so, but listen, no. I, okay, look. Things are out of whack, dude. The, the, the universe is out of whack. We're out of whack. I don't know what's going on. I, I, I feel like... We're at a critical level right now. I, I need you to fire up the podcast machine. Get that going right now. Emergency podcast right now. It, it Emergency podcast. It, Emergency. It doesn't work like that. I don't even have a podcast for like two weeks. I'm writing a fan fiction of Stranger Things, the snowball oh. episode that I never got to see. Bill. You can't just, I, I can't just do a podcast. You know what I mean? Look, I've got I, like three notes going on. This is That's an, it. I know. I know, dude. It's an emergency podcast. I know I've been on the show a lot. You I get mentioned all on, the time. I'm sure I people are sick you, of me. I am sure I've mentioned you every episode. I know. Look, also, they we'll might a, need a break. If this What I need to do succeeds, we can we can worry about it later. Well, kick me off the podcast. It'll be a great show of, of why I can never be back. Listen. Uh, listen, yeah. dude. Yeah. The world. I'm, what is so? What are you? Free, you don't really freak out. I don't. Are you an asset again? I, I mean, dude. it's been a long time. The I universe. can understand. Is out of whack. Do you remember the first podcast we did together? The very first one when we we're talking about Star Wars, right? And and the subject of Simon Pegg came up. Indeed. Do you remember that? Yes, yeah, he usually does. I, d- I defended him. I know. I don't. I don't know what happened. I don't know why. I never even felt that way. I, I think me doing that created a rift in the time space continuum, and it all leads to this new Star Trek, Star Trek movie. It's everything that's going bad in the world. Look, Bill. To save science fiction, maybe humanity, maybe the universe itself, we have to kick Simon Pegg out of science fiction. She's always right, ladies and gentlemen. No, this is- Bill, this is an emergency podcast. Stop, stop with the, with the, the, the fanfare. Please, dude, please. Fine. <sighs> All right, let's get to it. Simon Pegg, you finally come around to realize that he is actually evil. There, I mean, he caught he. Bill, what have what you, got? you were talking about was just was just a little, was just like a little sideways comment. It's so much deeper than that, dude. It's so much deeper than that. Now I've got this theory. I need your help putting some of the pieces together because uh, I'm losing my mind, dude. So let's just start with with Simon Pegg. He's just this really pasty little geeky looking guy guy that doesn't even belong really on television but weak he had weak pasty he's british for christ's sakes right yes he could have actually been born of the living nerddom of the comic-con much like anakin he was just born of the living nerd force and that propelled him somehow into being able to be some kind of movie star or entertainer it doesn't make any sense so you can follow his career from early on his first show was basically a show that I don't know, spaced, like made fun. Yeah, I don't know, that, every that, episode the, the of, entire, of Star Wars, that entire show made its living on making fun of the Phantom Menace. That's right. That's from, all that show ever did. And from that day forward, he's been amassing power, silently, steadily, and surely, just a growing beast. And and he's attaching himself to every single nerd-related project. He's in video games, he's in movies, he's in Star Wars and Star Trek. That, that is true. And, and, and also, he, he has been in every recent incarnation of Star, Tra- uh, Star Wars, aside from Star Wars Rebels, Star Wars Battlefront video game, Star Wars The Clone Wars. Even though he rips on George Lucas all the time, Charlie, guess what? They offered him a chance to play Dengar in an episode of The Clone Wars, which he should fucking hate, and he took it. And he reprised it for the Battlefront video game. It's disgusting. It's a double, the double standard upon double standard upon double standard. So, so how does a guy go from some nerd TV show, barely watched, starting to star in more things, he's writing his own series and movies, he's starring in them, to the point where all of a sudden he's got his own trilogy under his belt. The Shaun of the Dead, the... Uh, 
Cor- what is that thing called? The Cornetto trilogy. The Cornetto trilogy. Come on. I don't. I try. You're not supposed to, to know this stuff. I this try is your not podcast. To f- Listen to me about Simon Pegg. Let me tell you something about Simon Pegg. Okay, here's where, here's where you may have a point, Charlie. And I'm, y- you know, this is a conspiracy show sometimes, and I am certainly given to listening to a conspiracy theory. And I'm starting to buy into this, and I'll tell you why. Because Simon Pegg starts off by ripping on the prequels. And then he slowly worms his way into the Clone Wars and the Battlefront and the stuff that the younger Star Wars people like. And even they now start to listen to him. He's gaining more moral high ground than anybody in the sci-fi game right now. Putting himself up as the ultimate authority. He's the ultimate authority. And he's the tastemaker. What he says goes. Dictating (sighs) sci-fi policy. All the Star Trek movies, the new Star Wars... His stupid fucking trilogy. And he's all over the Mission Impossible. He's probably writing an Avengers movie right now as we speak. Bill, to the point where he wrote this last Star Trek movie, there's nobody's up in arms. The internet should be on fire from that heap of steaming shit that he wrote. That's true. What kind of influence does he have? That movie got like a great great rating on, on Rotten Tomatoes. It's done horribly at the box office, but you know what that shows? It's the peg, that's the peg influence. It's the peg influence. It, it, And you know what else, though, is the fact that it's not doing well at the box office you think would be fans revolting, but it's not. It's just it's just this quiet acceptance. He's killing it from within. Yeah. Now, Bill, I I need you to help me on this. I'm not I'm not the Trekkie that you are. I'm a casual fan. I love all the the series and whatnot. These reboots have been. I don't know. But this one, it's a turning point. I know that the original series, I want you to elaborate on this, was created in the 60s as, as a message to that culture and to that political environment when the world was seeming, seemingly coming unhinged. Civil rights, wars, America was just divided and against itself. It, 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 the worst it had ever been in a long time we're kind of nearing something like that now. Can, can you give me a little background on? Well, it's it's a great point you bring up because at this point in time, where we are in life, we need the kind of Star Trek that was invented in the 60s so much right now because Gene Roddenberry came up with an idea, a vision of this utopian society where races got along, people explored different cultures, different societies. Every So many episodes of that show were metaphors for Vietnam, for race relations, for cultural issues, cultural differences. And even the movies, Charlie, even when they got to the movies, you know, they... Star Trek, the motion picture, right? What it's, it's about AI, right? It's about this thing like coming into consciousness. It's this think piece. And then eh, they did Wrath of Khan so they could blow shit up and get more people in the box office. Fine. Then what? They save the whales. Nice message. Right in the 80s when we needed it. Japanese are killing whales all the time. We had uh, the next step. The next one was about a, a, a like a TV evangelist, right? Right when all that was happening. Mm-hmm. And the next episode, the next movie, The Undiscovered Country. It's about the Berlin Wall coming down. It starts off with a Chernobyl, and they have to make peace. And the guy that's the Gorbachev character is named Gorkhan. They don't even hide it. They put it right out there for you. Hey, here, here is some help in the form of sci-fi. Was it before or after that the wall actually fell that that movie came out? It was about a year before. Do you see that these movies, they actually do influence the culture. They, they influence people. They, they change the way people think. It's why in the worst of times that entertainment is so important for artists to be really artists to really dig down deep and really represent what's going on with the people of that time. It, it's their duty. And he's somehow wormed himself into a position where when we needed Star Trek the most in our current political climate, we've got police officers shooting people at will. We've got Hillary Clinton robbing and stealing the whole election from Bernie Sanders, a person who was was going to hopefully come in and make some kind of difference. You've got just the whole Trump clown sideshow going on over there. 
it feels like our country is coming apart. This is when we would have needed just the best Star Trek movie of all time. And then here comes the man who supposedly knows Star Trek and Star Wars better than anyone. Like we said, the ultimate authority. Everyone looks to Simon Pegg for their for their nerddom, for their for their answers and in, in everything that is pop culture science fiction. And and he gets the keys to the kingdom. And he is allowed to write, write a Star Trek movie. And he gives us Teen Space Force 5000. Charlie, I don't know if you're familiar with this. I, I, have, I have been following Simon Pegg and, and, and his outlandish behavior for many years now. He once wrote a, uh, a blog article on his simonpegg.net, which features the most ridiculous picture of him that you Good could Lord. ever imagine. Good Lord. He wrote a piece about how uh, sci-fi was like a pure thing that was enjoyed by nerds and that they shared this common experience. And then it was hijacked by market forces and merchandising to pacify these, these free thinking people and to keep feeding them, you know, turning it into more and more bubblegum sci-fi and just throwing it at them until they, they were just completely, you know, infants sucking on the bottle of bad sci-fi. And again, he gets the keys and he delivers Exactly that. Why do you think he knows so much about it? He's the one behind it. I think he even in that blog piece refers to the word conspiracy. There's some people that think he was maybe even the person that got George Lucas kicked out of Star Wars. That whole Disney buyout thing is... is That's very suspect. That's well, it very was suspect. After he was complaining about the prequels and saying all the things he did about it, not long after George Lucas is gone. And, and George Lucas literally was kicked out of Star Wars. Yes. The man who created it yes. was kicked out of it. And then all of a sudden, he's a ghost writer on the first movie that they do? He was a ghost writer. Not many people know that. He was hanging out on the set so much that rumor has it, John Boyega, a.k.a. Finn, was uh, annoyed, le legitimately annoyed by the fact that Simon Pegg kept showing up. Yeah, I, bet they, I bet they fixed him up right good. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure he was pulled aside and... Uh, and told to shut his fucking mouth. So they've pacified this generation. That something that could have snowballed into change. And changing the way that people think and look about the world around them. Gone. We missed the chance. Completely gone. And, and now, uh, because of the fact that Star Trek has not done well at the box office, they're not going to make any more Star Trek movies. And they're just going to make some new you know, TV show. He ran it into the ground. Just like he set out to do. I don't know if the, tan the time-space continuum got ripped when he wrote the script. I don't know if he started out good and he's been co-opted or something's happened or if it was from our podcast when I defended him. Well, I think that did have something to do with it because I was coming at you. I wanted to bring... I wanted to call Simon Pegg onto the carpet. I wanted to him to answer for his actions. And, and you know, Charlie, to my disappointment... You, you kind of just let him off the hook. I, I don't know what happened. And I, and I, I don't think know that what maybe happened. in that clash of I, the I Titans, fell for it. Look at his face. He's so unassuming. He, do, he does he, look he, very... He's slender, slight. He's nerdy looking. He, he's he got a funny laugh. He does look like the kind of guy that I you like could just him. hang out and watch. The, I've, I've, I have fallen into his trap many times. When he first played Scotty, I was like ranting and raving about, oh, you see Simon Pegg as Scotty. He nailed that shit. thought he was like you know, cute and funny. And then when he's running around in those Mission Impossible movies, you know, telling Tom Cruise, oh, don't do it. You're going to die. You're going to fall off the plane. I, I, I thought it was great. That's uh, pure evil, Bill. He's pure evil. That's how, you know, that's how you get sucked in. Isn't that the devil's old uh, trick? You know, convincing you that he doesn't exist. And he, 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 free will. He gets you by your free will. Remember that? Right? The, the, that's, the, and that's what Simon Pegg, that's what Simon Pegg has done. He's, he's, he has convinced uh, nerds everywhere that, that he is on the ultimate high horse and that he dictates policy. And even from the other side of it, even when he's not writing this shit, he's telling us not to be pacified by the corporate science fiction mongers. That he created to the point of that he is the ruling. The he, it, it is, it, it is, it's his own... Skull and bones. Will, that will he's you please running. tell? Will you please 
remind if anyone is ever going to hear this, what happened in that last Star Trek movie? Because no one's going to see it. So I would say spoiler alert, spoiler alert, but no one's going to see it anyways. Will you tell them the basic premise and what happened in this? Yes. In this movie, Bill? Yes. And, and you know, going back just to say what I said about Star Trek earlier, we, you know, what we know about the, the fact that it was it was made to it was made to be a mirror of society and show us our show us our greatness and show us our, our what we lacked. And then in this Star Trek movie, Star Trek Beyond, written by Simon Pegg. The well, first of all, let me say this really quickly. He he does try to throw a bone out into the Gene Roddenberry universe by making Sulu gay. But what he's actually doing, Charlie, in that He's actually insulting every gay person ever. Pull, pull that article up. Let me pull, pull this up because this Simon Pegg computer. actually, uh, yeah, I've, I've, uh, I just happened to have Simon Pegg's uh, blog up since we started talking about this. And let's look at his post about, about uh, gay Sulu. This was posted on July 11th, 2016, and it's called A Word About Canon. He even uses your favorite word just as a fuck you right to your face, Charlie. I Cannon. know he listens to the podcast. Oh, sure he does. Oh, he's got his finger on every pulse. But this is what he says, basically. Uh, George Takei, as you know, who played Sulu in 79 episodes and six movies and several guest appearances, was not keen on the idea of his character <laughs> being gay because he said Sulu never was gay. And the Star Trek reboot is supposed to still be a continuation of that universe in some ways. But Simon Pegg says... Why persist with the idea when George Takei wasn't keen? The thinking behind embracing an existing character was that it felt as though it retroactively, retroactively put right something that had long gone wrong. Now, he goes on to say other things, but basically he talks about the difference between the two timelines, right? There's the original the Gene Roddenberry timeline, and then there's this split J.J. Abrams, Simon Pegg timeline. And now he says... We were disappointed that George didn't see it that way, but truth be told, Sulu Prime, which would be the original universe Sulu, seemed to be missing a very important point. With galaxies of respect to the great man, this is not his Sulu. John Cho does not play a young George Decay, nor does he play the same character George Decay played in the original series. He is a different Sulu. With the Kelvin timeline, we are not entirely beholden to existing canon. This is an alternate reality and as such, is full of new and alternate possibilities. My God. Which is saying, Charlie, that homosexuality is a choice. And that uh, Sulu was not that born... That can happen in life will just magically turn you gay. Absolutely. Sulu was, not, uh, Sulu was born uh, heterosexual in one universe and uh, would have obviously been born heterosexual in both universes. Well, he was already was, alive for a long time. He was time. already alive before the split... He went, he went gay in less than 10 years. So he went... Simon Pegg actually had... So, so listen to you. Listen to you. Listen to me, you people, who got mad at me about s- being against the gay Sulu thing. And this is exactly why. Simon Pegg is saying that Sulu decided to be gay in an alternate timeline. Right-wing Christian agenda. Absolutely. Disguised as this liberal nerddom. That's that's that that's reaching out and 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 breaking barriers like Gene Roddenberry did. Jesus, just when just he's see. actually just feeding us a line right out of the, you know the mouth of, of Rick Santorum. It just gets worse. Everything you pull up, everything we're talking about, it just it gets worse. How, Bill? Gonna? Can I tell you something else about Simon Pegg's uh, hypocrisy that just occurred to me? Simon Pegg, uh, as, as we've many times discussed, ripping on the prequels all the time, hates Star Wars. Uh, George Lucas, he actually said, you know, George Lucas killed his kids when but the, the prequels. But after he had already said all this stuff in his whole show space that ended, he was invited by someone in Lucasfilm to the premiere of Revenge of the Sith to meet George Lucas, who apparently, because he didn't read the internet and shit, didn't know that Simon Pegg was such an asshole. Simon Pegg went. He went to the Revenge of the Sith premiere. And he met George Lucas. And he was nice to George Lucas. And this guy with this fucking moral high ground, right? With this, with this high horse that he knows everything that is right about Star Wars and everything that is wrong about Star Wars and that George Lucas killed his kids, gets an invitation to show up at Revenge of the Sith. 
He's right there. He's right there with his stupid dog tag on and his, and his little Federation emblem that he wears. I don't know if anyone look Google pictures of Simon Pegg. You'd see him wearing fucking dog tags to well, some I think fashion show. Fix was in a while ago. I think George Lucas knew and pretended he didn't know about these things, and his life was probably in danger. That's the only Do you think thing that's I why? Think Maybe it's like keep your enemies closer type of thing? Like let's bring Simon Pegg to the Revenge of the Sith premiere and see if I can you know, get him off my fucking back. Bill, I don't want to call attention to this, and I know this is a well-guarded secret around Pop Talk and Aliens, but I know that you're not just researching all of this stuff in your, your little room here on your computer. I know you have a lot more access, and we need to use some of that technology. Can, can you please just, just get, get the secrets out? It, the universe is at stake anyways. I know you might get we killed will. for this. We will, but I do. Ha- I have to go back. I-, I-, I will. I will. I will let some of my secrets be known. But I-, I do have to go back and address the thing you asked me because I went off on Gay Sulu. What happens in the new Star Trek movie, aside from the <laughs> throwing the you know social uh, politically correct bone out there for the Gay Sulu, the way that the movie cl- climaxes, Charlie, as you know, but for our audience who hopefully hasn't seen it, and never will. The uh, at one point near the end, uh, they somehow clone Captain Kirk, or they make phantoms of him, like in Superman Two. And each one of them is riding a fucking motorcycle, and with like uh, aviator sunglasses on. And the 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 enemy is shooting at all these the, these these clone Kirks, and they're not killing him because it's not the real Kirk. And then the real Kirk rides his motorcycle around uh, the crew of the Enterprise and other survivors and creates like a Tron-style jet wall of safety around them with a regular motorcycle that he pulled out of a like 3,000-year-old ship. Son of a bitch. And then, once they get back up into space, they have this old ship because the Enterprise blew up yet again. Which, by the way, in the old movies, when the, when the Enterprise blew up, it blew up one time and it was a big deal. This one, all the time. Anyway... Enterprise blew up, of course, so they're flying this old ship, and they find like a boombox or something, and with and they're listening to Public Enemy, I think, at one point, which is bad enough. And then they realize that if they play music really loud in space while the enemies are chasing them, then the enemies will be distracted and won't be able to communicate and will blow up. So they fire up the Beastie Boys, and they, the crew of the Starship Enterprise, created in 1966 by Gene Roddenberry to further our thoughtfulness and understanding of of ourselves through science fiction. That crew blasts the fucking Beastie Boys throughout space and succeeds in destroying the enemy. That is Simon Pegg's Star Trek. He has to be stopped, Bill. Now... I think you're on the same page as me. Do you understand yeah. why? I, yes. I'm yes. I, I mean, I've always had the, the Simon Pegg thing, but now that you've put it together, and, and even if you look at what's happened since, just since he put the final period on the last sentence of that script, we've lost Leonard Nimoy. Thank God. Not only did we lose Leonard Nimoy, but here's a very interesting thing, Charlie, that just occurred to me. Leonard Nimoy and William Shatner, who were brother-like friends for years referred to each other as brothers and best friends, all of a sudden there was some sort of falling out that William Shatner himself says he didn't understand. And Leonard Nimoy died without them making up for whatever problem that William Shatner doesn't even know what what it was. Simon Pegg. Simon Pegg. Simon Pegg. Breaking the, the bond between William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy, and then Leonard Nimoy dies. And Shatner is left in pieces... He wrote a whole book about it. Then we lost Chekhov. We lost Kenny Baker of R2-D2 fame. We've got Trump, as you said. We've got Hillary killing people and and stealing emails or whatever she does. (sighs) You're right. I I can't even imagine how this is going to play out if he's allowed to continue. You, You need to break out the big box, Bill. All right, I'm going to tell... Okay, here's the thing. If we're somehow able to succeed at 
I guess, destroying Simon Pegg. I mean, can we can we just kill him? No, no, Bill, we can't just. Are you I mean, crazy? I don't want to murder you can't just someone, kill, but I, no, I don't care about murdering. I, I I would do it in a heartbeat if I thought that that would solve the problem. Yes, we could kill him. The problem is, is do you want some Simon Pegg force ghost? Growing more powerful than you could possibly imagine. That's true. That's true. You'd be doing him a favor. He would. He would. He would. He would welcome it. He would welcome it, and he would turn to dust and his fucking ghost, his pasty ass we, ghost. We have to use somehow his technology against him. We we have to beat him at his own game, Bill. All right. Okay. We got to find a way to beat him at his own game. I need you to get into get into that aliens and pop talk supercomputer. We okay, need to figure so something out here. As as you know, Charlie, because I mention you on every fucking episode of the show, uh, but as our audience doesn't, I'll tell you a couple of things that I have here that uh, I wouldn't normally reveal. But hopefully, if we can destroy Simon Pegg... No one's going to hear this anymore. No one will ever hear this podcast because it, it will never have happened. We'll reset the time-space continuum to where it needs to be. Everything will be fine. It'll be like Quantum Leap. Thank you very much. You never knew about it. It didn't happen. Do you think Forget we'll still about know? it. Will we still know what we do? I think we will still know. I think that's generally how it works. We'll we'll get to know. We'll know. But no one will know. No one will have heard this. No one will have heard this, so they won't remember when I tell you this. Charlie, you know that I've done many episodes on aliens. Um, you might think that, you know, it's from reading books and doing research, which it is. However, I have acquired knowledge from people that I cannot name, and in some cases I have even acquired technology. Technology that you know about, and now our audience knows about, that can... Well, basically, what I believe I can do, Charlie, is when Simon Pegg was in The Force Awakens, he had to be digitally scanned in order to make his fat alien That's costume. That's right. Let's I believe that I can hijack that file of his 3D do it now. rendering. Get on the computer thing. Get on the super terminal, please. Please, please. Yeah. Hmm. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. Look Bill, at that. I, I, I don't have your... Yeah, we're looking at... I'm looking at a... I'm looking at basically what, what would look like to you uh, a, a, a ghost figure of, of particles and, and 3D mapping. And what I'm seeing, Charlie is that I believe that much like the crew of the Enterprise in Star Trek Beyond destroyed the enemy with the Beastie Boys, I think that the musical notes and the originality of the original Star Trek theme could disperse Simon Pegg's atoms into nothing. What? I think that if we play the Star Trek theme at him loud enough that he will literally... As you can said, disrupt his very being, his molecules, to the point where they'll be dispersed through space. Well, no I, space ghost. No space ghost, because, like as you said, I I think it's I think we can now confirm that he was born of uh, the Comic Con living nerddom. Living nerddom. He no father, no mother. He's not actually a physical being in the sense that we think of physical beings. So we could disperse his atoms, disperse everything that makes up Simon Pegg. He would become nothing. This is this is crazy. How is this even going to work? Well, where I mean, how do we even find him? Let me. I I, I was given a tool by uh, when I was doing my Area Fifty One episode that allows me to look um, into places that uh, Google Maps can't see and dial in to. Now that I have these, uh, now that I have this uh, rendering of Simon Pegg in three D, I believe that I can identify his DNA structure and figure out exactly where he is, which is... Please don't tell me England, because that's such a fucking long flight. Ah! Oh, this is... Oh, what a jackpot. Charlie, he's in L.A. What? He's, he's six hours away. He is right now in Tom Cruise's treehouse, writing Mission Impossible 17. What Apparently, they've written... They've got a bunch on the shelf ready Are to go. Are we going to drive to L.A.? Well... I think we're going to have to if we're going to do this. I mean, he's he doesn't live in the U.S. and he doesn't live on the West Coast. So, you know, as original Spock once said, time is of the essence. I'm going to go. I'm going to go get my freak out, geek out bag together. Right. right we're going to need a really, really loud stereo. We we need to record all this. You need to bring. 
You need to bring that the podcast machine, the mobile version with I'll us. Can it. you do that? Can I you can bring, bring it? it? I can bring it. <sighs> okay. All right. Let's pause for a second and we'll be back. We have to remember one thing though before we do this. When I say Tom Cruise's treehouse, we're not talking Bart Simpson's treehouse. This is Tom Cruise. It's a lavish treehouse with powered by pure Scientology. P- powered by Scientology, probably. Well, I, I, you know, I was going to say that that it, maybe it would be actually encased in a, in a, uh, in some sort of uh, energy field of Scientology that was blocking it. But I can see Simon Pegg. They'll stay f- focused, I, please. Okay, I just, please. I'm just trying to figure it out. I don't want to have to deal with Scientology listen, and listen, Simon Pegg. Okay, look, look, we, we talked we about can't fix everything. Bill, we talked about what happens if we succeed. Possibly, what, what about the repercussions? What happens if we if we don't pull this off? We get caught. The, the 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 music doesn't hit the right volume to disperse his his very being throughout space. What's going to happen? Well, then we're probably looking at we're going to have to take it to the streets. Listeners, I I implore you that if you do not hear from me and Bill again, if you're actually listening to this podcast right now, it means we failed. We failed because technically this shouldn't exist, and it, it's up to you to stop him. If we're all is lost, we may live through this if we fail, and so we can be part of this. I, I, I can tell you that there is actually a change.org. Uh, there's people that can help you. There's a change.org petition to get Simon Pegg out of Star Wars. That's real. Start there, people. Start Do what there. you can. We got to take it to the streets. Grassroots. But we, we, yeah, we. I mean, you know, uh, uh, boycotting films, um, not showing up to to you know, see him sign bullshit at Comic-Con. Boycott Comic-Con. It's a, it's, it's fake. It's to, it's to pacify. It's a goddamn Bilderberger meeting at this point when he's running the show. Okay. And nobody even knows. We got to go. We got to stop. All right. Let's get the, let's get the, the, I got to pause this. We're going to, we're going to mobilize this podcast and we're going to take fucking care of something. Let's go. Um, we, we have to go stop a very bad man. Okay. Okay? Okay. I love you. Watch after mom. Bye, son. The princess. You have to take care of her. Listen, dude. Sorry. Uh, so, just if, you, if you're listening, it, it's been it's about an hour. It's, um, it's, it's 11.30 um, Pacific time. We're, we're leaving to... To go to LA right now to stop in Simon Pegg. Uh, some kind of demon or something, I don't know. We'll uh, should be there in about, uh, well, two, three, it's 11.30. About we're gonna, three or four? We'll take five. Yeah, we'll get there about oh, three. Shit. Look, Bill, I've got some time to kill. Is there any rule against doing like a podcast within a podcast you mean a non-emergency podcast within the emergency podcast look man i know i pulled you into this it just might be the last chance that we have to put your seatbelt on um you know actually charlie now that now that we have a moment um i did a stranger things podcast hey, you keep talking about that everyone uh, loved it uh, yeah no no Good but job. but there was something that I, I didn't mention in that podcast about uh, the great winona rider that maybe you could tell the story since it really actually happened to you and not me it, what happened to you too? You were there. I was there. I watched. You did. You did everything. I just kind I, I of stood did back because I was afraid. My Nona Ryder was. Uh, see, um, she was in Menlo Park. Um, and Bill used to spend a lot of time at the BBC, so we're on the back patio having some pops. And she was sitting there in the corner, and in look as cute and wonderful as she might look on the big screen, she's a fucking Earth Angel in real life. Oh God, yes. I mean, like. She should have been in Lord of the Rings. Elven features. She should be perfect. in everything, really. Yeah, she should be in everything. But um, anyways, I asked Bill if he would run back. This is like right in the middle of her big uh, paparazzi spotlight when she got caught in shoplifting. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And someone, I guess Sam Shepard or someone, was at Kepler's bookstore next door. And they were going to do, he was there to see a reading. Anyway, she was having drinks with her friend and I want to bug her. So I asked Bill to go back to my house and get my copy of Heather's off of my shelf. You go, you go. Which he did, which he did. Good friend. He left the Winona writer 
proximity I did. to go get that movie for me. So doing the classy thing, I waited till she was done. She was getting up, talking with her friend, and then I approached her. I said, look, I know this is lame, and I wanted to wait until you guys were leaving so you wouldn't get crowded and people wouldn't bug you, but would you please sign this copy of Heather's for me? So awesome. And instead of just signing it, she started asking me questions about it. That's right. She's like, oh, is this the 20th anniversary release? Is this the one where they went and did like, they treated it like a school yearbook and did a reunion thing? Oh my God, I love this. And then she was asking me questions that I couldn't answer, but I wanted to keep talking to her because I was fucking like in her spell. So I just started making answers up. Saying yes, it was. And, really? Oh yeah, they did that little uh, vignette thing at the end, right? Is that what you're talking about? Oh yeah, this is so great. I never, I've never seen it before. You should have um, just given it to her. I just said, well, look, look I live it. really close. You want to go watch it with me? <laughs> you didn't say that. I know. I mean, I, look, if I could go back in time, I, I would sell my soul. Yeah. To be, but anyways, she kept kind of talking to me and asking me questions about it to the point where I kind of just started removing myself and slowly backing away from the conversation <laughs> because I was so fucking fried I didn't know what well, to yeah. do. Well, yeah, you start when it when a star is starts and that you want to meet and, and you're starstruck by starts asking you questions. It's it's like it's like what we're going to do to Simon Pegg really. It's just like the atoms start kind of dispersing and things don't match up anymore because you are now being in the position of having to answer. It's impossible. Look, I don't know what is said about her but she was honestly could not have been a nicer, more gracious person. She was fucking lovely. I know. I, I stood back about, I don't know, 40 feet, 50 feet, you know, heard some of it, Look caught up. some of it on the wind, but I watched it and I watched her face. I watched her face, Charlie, and her face said, I am no better than you. I'll tell you this, buddy. Hey, you are no better I don't get a chance to say this later. You're a great friend and, and that's proven in that moment that you gave me that moment alone with her instead of crowding in and talking to you let me have my moment in the sun with my Nona Ryder dude oh. that is a fucking true friend people. well thank you thank you so I, I'm glad that you know and I still I still got to be a part of it in 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 the in the way of just be, being around her and watching her interact with someone that I know and and, and I'm is great friends with was uh, I, it's like a priceless experience. I don't know that I could have handled the, even the one-on-one -on -one with her. I, it, look, it was glorious. It was glorious. I I don't know, Bill. I don't know what to say about that. I felt like we had some kind of connection, and I just freaked out and I ran. I ran away. I made a little joke about well, I want to take up more of your time, and it looks like people are looking over. I don't want them alerting the paparazzi, and. It did break her out of that spell. She looked around. She's like, oh, yeah. Really? Like, she just did so not even consider she, that she's plastered everywhere on in every supermarket across America uh, with video, you know, surveillance footage, uh, pictures of, of her stealing stuff, right? Remember that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And she, and she said, oh, you're right. Thank you so much. And she, cause she I'm sorry. I, I was just, you know, being a human being. Yeah. That's what she was doing. Yeah. She got caught up being a fucking human yeah, being I know. for so long that it almost did her in. And you, you know, reminded her. I, I know that you're being just a human being right now, which is, uh, which is so uh, uncommon for someone like you. And, and it's so sweet. I'm, I'm enjoying this moment, but I'm going to have to remind you of the, of the cold truth that you're a celebrity and, uh, you know, it's a real talking point right now. Yeah, Bill, I'll say this. I, I also got a full, unadulterated a half an hour to talk to Gwen Stefani. Also, pre-fame, but also couldn't be nicer, just, just on our way up. You know what? Let me but tell I you. But I will say that I, I, I no, think go the ahead. connection was stronger with, with Winona and Gwen gave me a hug and a kiss on the cheek. Well, that's pretty good. I'll tell you this, because I, uh, post-fame, got to go to the uh, backstage of the Tragic Kingdom show, in uh, which, by the way, I saw George Lucas there. Oh, shit. Yeah, George Lucas. He brought he, His daughter loved him, and he brought a bunch of lightsabers, and he walked right by me backstage. And see, again, like with the Winona Ryder thing, it's like I couldn't take it, so I just watched George Lucas walk. <laughs> And just was frozen, yeah. and then but then I got to hang out with the rest of the No Doubt band, you know Tony and, and those dudes. Yeah, and they good were dudes. great people, but Gwen, I didn't come out of her fucking trailer. 
too famous. That Didn't first get meet, to meet her. That first meetup was because of your friend Eric Floats and. Oh, mine was also because of Eric. Floats. They were actually supposed to at one time spend the night at my house after that show at the Edge. That's. And that's why wow. I was there. Got to go backstage and meet him and stuff. I got. Uh, I didn't get close to that, but I did get the experience of. Uh, I was living with Eric Clotes, and uh, the phone rang, and you know this is back when we had house phones. Phone rang, and I picked up, and uh, uh, is, is uh, Eric there? Uh, no, he's uh, he's not here right now. But uh, can I take a message? So yeah, um, this is Tony. Just wanted to uh, let him know that I got some tickets and some passes for him for you know Friday or whatever, and I was like. Are you, are you talking, talking about the No Doubt show? So yeah, this is, this is like, are you like the to, the Tony yeah, that plays Tony the bass Kendall, in the in uh, the fucking No Doubt? Tony Dab. Kendall, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he's yeah. like, yeah, yeah. It, uh, you know, come by. I got a few of them. Uh, okay. Uh, and then you know, I just like, got off the phone. I can't I can't deal with the with the with the stars. When I met Elton John to, to do a, a a record when he's doing a record signing, like. I, it, like I don't know what I was saying. I know that what I was trying to say, and what I think I conveyed the point. At least Bernie Toppin understood. I could tell. I was trying to convey the point that uh, it was because of them that I decided to learn how to play piano and write songs, and that it changed the course of my life in every single way imaginable. And that you know I, you've had that much of an effect. And uh, I, I didn't. It didn't come out like that. I think it came out like I play. The, the key word music <laughs> for you. <laughs> and Bernie Toppin was like, yeah, I, I get what he's saying. Yeah, that's cool, man. Thank you. He's all nice. But, uh, uh, did I ever tell you the, the time that I had lunch with Kevin Bacon? <laughs> no, you did not. Yes, I, well, we were on the movie set. You were there. Oh, that's right. I was there. I didn't eat lunch with him, though. Yeah, We did. He ate with all the extras because we were on Alcatraz. Look, I remember being there, and I do. I remember watching him uh, murder something. We got to be in the scene where he murdered. Bill, Bill, and I were um, extras in the movie Murder in the First. That's right. And it takes place uh, in the twenties and or thirties, something some, like that. Some shit like that. And we had to be prisoners, and it was all shot on location in Alcatraz, which was closed down, and we got to roam around the prison. And instead of being in the movie, um, I think we either dropped acid or smoked weed and, and gave ourselves a, an unadulterated, unguided tour. Oh, of, of, of closed off parts of Alcatraz yeah. that they do not allow tourists in. Yeah, yeah. we were walking like through the guard towers yeah. that were closed yeah. off and stuff. But anyways, after one of the scenes that we were in, in the very back, you can't see us. Um, so don't bother checking. But you, you can, uh, we can, t I can tell who we are based on where we were positioned, but it's, we're blurred. Is that it? Yeah. We're yeah. It's, yeah, blurred. But do you? I, but do no. Remember, he said there's a lot of uh, poking and prodding in acting. Yeah, that was because his comment. He, he was getting pro, pro, he was getting all that shitty makeup on it, like on his eye. But do you remember this also? Two other, a couple other cool things about that. First was that they gave us prison haircuts before yes. the, that, which was awesome. And then the uh, the movie, the scene took place in the middle of the day, but we filmed in the middle of the night. So they had the most ungodly bright lights shining into every window that it looked like day and then you'd go outside and it was night and it was fucking crazy but then the other thing was while uh, the guards while he's killing the guy we're in the background right we're the prisoners watching and the guards go to hold us back so we don't riot and you and I are saying things like you're never gonna get me come on <laughs> that's right that's right we did out loud we were saying that uh, back up cop I see you know what's good for you get out of the way or I'll cut you uh, absolutely remember that. Did oh, I ever tell you about the time that I uh, met Macaulay Culkin and he gave me a hard time for having long hair? I was there for that, and he, he not only to give you the hard the hard time, he gave you the Home Alone scream. He did. I forgot oh, that he gave me the, the full, Home Alone scream. The full on hands on cheeks. Oh, he gave you that. Yeah, everybody on that movie set. Me and Bill were extras in some movies, but the the, the fucking production assistants and the assistant directors followed him around, called him Mac, and kissed his ass to no end. Oh my god, it was and crazy. And he treated them like garbage. Oh yeah. It was horrible. But then remember, Absolutely the opposite. Ted Danson was in that movie, and he was the coolest fucking guy. He you remember that? Cool. Look, let's let's pick up this podcast in a second. Right. I gotta run in and get some cigarettes, too. Okay. 
Okay, podcast, um, uh, we'll, pause. You know, we we got to keep the battery, so why don't we just, uh, we'll fire it back up when we get to the the Simon Pegg layer. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, signing off. Um, if you don't hear from us again, um, well, all is well in the universe, and if you're hearing this, you're all fucked. Take it to the streets. Alright, I think this is it. Turn, turn the car. Turn the music off. Just a mile to go. Alright, right, okay, okay, okay. Fuck. Why do, you know, why do we have to get here during Jack Straw, though? You know what I mean? Like five hours of Morrissey and Elton John. We finally get to the dead one here. Oh, I know, and it was Jack Straw. Okay, um, listeners, um, we had to conserve batteries. It's about five hours later. What time did we leave? Like? After like 11.15. So it's 4.30. 4.30? 4, 3.45. 3.45. We still got time. Okay. Under the cover of darkness. And the lights off. Okay. Tom Cruise says this is. I, this isn't even really a house. I don't know what you'd call it. You well, think Simon gentlemen. Pig's sleeping? You think he's burning the midnight oil? You're outside. Fucking the Tom Cruise complex. There is a definite giant treehouse way back there, but there's just miles of walls. Looks like mazes. You know what, though? We're gonna have to... How do we... Pull out those fucking binoculars you've got. Look at... There's a light on. A there's a light on in there. You can see... He, Simon Pegg's working. He's typing right now. Look. See him from here? Yeah. Get your binoculars. Yeah, he's Look at this. He's fucking adorable. He is. He's so adorable. Look at him. He's wearing a Return of the Jedi shirt. He, you know, that's probably not even like a new shirt. He probably had that from the very... <laughs> He didn't buy that with his fuck you Hollywood money. No, like, he's had that. He, oh. he bought that in 19... No, fuck this. Come on. Stay on mission. Stay on mission. But he's so likable. I though. know. That's how he pulls you in. We all know. That's what... Maybe he'd just eat some popcorn and watch a movie with us. We'll come out of there speaking in tongues, dude. Okay, we'll, be, we'll come out of there singing Beastie place. Boys. And... All right. Look. There's, like, cards everywhere. There's lights. It looks like there's... Fucking cameras all over the place. Yeah, dude. there's definitely cameras. Oh shit. Okay, now look. Um, do you have the device to play, play the yeah. music through? Yeah. Yep. Do you have the Star Trek theme? I ready? got the Star Trek your, theme. Are you gonna just Spotify it, or what are you gonna do? I'll just, I'll just I'll, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll Spotify the goddamn thing. It's uh, okay. Get it ready. I've got, right. I got the portable. Bluetooth thing. We really gotta get this thing cranked up. Loud. All right. Yeah. So you got you got the speaker. We'll hook this. We'll, well, you know how many crazy people have probably tried to get in here. How the fuck are we gonna do this? I don't, I don't know. even know where to start. See, I think, I think people probably don't even try, man. I mean, there's gotta be a way. And look, I broke into fucking Area 51. Kind okay. of. Okay. I got beaten up really bad, but I got halfway in. Okay. Let um, me just test this out. Okay, that's just gonna there give us go. all right. Let's okay. just listen there to this all right, for a second. Okay, let's get fired up. All right. Why don't you just put your hoodie up, all right? So all right. we should have got camouflage. Maybe you can hear it from Why here. Why don't we get grease paint? No, 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 no. All right, let's go over here. This, that's original Star Trek motherfucker. You know they try to play some shitty version of that. Bill, at the end of the Star Trek Beyond. Look at this. They trick it's us again. Kind of... Oh God. Okay, this is this is a good way. This is a good way. There's no lights. There's no lights here. There's no lights here. <gasps> look, look. There's some kind of like rain or something. What is that? Bill, it's. Is that? I think it's a, sh it's a shit pipe. No. No, shit pipe. Is that like Bill, a Shawshank? A that's a Shawshank shit pipe. Just like Charlie. the just like the one in Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. It's a fucking sign, Bill. Our okay. favorite movie of all time. It's Shawshank Redemption. I can hear people fucking. There's cops. There's you hear those sirens? There's cops. Just okay. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to take the shit pipe. We're gonna go in the shit pipe. We're gonna have to take the shit pipe. Let's go in the shit pipe. God damn it! All right. God damn There's it! There's gotta be a shit pipe. <laughs> oh. Okay. Get, let me see. Get, oh get, go. God, don't. <laughs> <coughs> Bill, we're climbing through miles of Tom Cruise <laughs> shit. <laughs> don't. It's, it should. Shouldn't this shit not stink okay. with the Scientology? <laughs> I thought this thing smelled bad from the outside. It's good. It's good. It's good. The jokes. All right. It's good to have jokes. Okay. Okay. Oh, Jesus. What a fucking shit pipe. Oh. Oh.
<laughs> Andy Dufresne crawled through 300 football fields worth of piss and shit for his freedom. <laughs> We're gonna do, do the oh, same. God, damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God damn. This isn't as long. This isn't as long. Look, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. All right, wait, wait. Get it out. Go, go, go. Move. Get the fuck out. Jesus, Andy Dufresne had a suit and a plastic bag to change into. Well, one thing's for sure. We don't need grease paint anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is natural camouflage. This might have been a really good idea. <laughs> Smear some of Tom Cruise's shit on your cheek, okay? Okay. Look at that. There's like, like the generator room or something. This is, uh... Okay. okay. It's like an air conditioning unit or something. This must power the whole house. Power something. Oh my god. The, just my fear right now is if we don't keep moving, we're gonna fall into a Scientology trapdoor. There's gotta be trapdoors everywhere. Ah, uh, Bill. It's a locked door. <laughs> it's a um, trapdoor? There's an intercom right here. Can I just push it? I've, <laughs> we've come this far. Well, there's no more shit pipe. <laughs> Uh, uh, I should say my name? Clear. I don't think he means your, your name. Clear? I swear, but please proceed. Oh, because clear. The Scientology thing. Oh, that was a stroke of luck. Holy shit, you're dumb. <laughs> oh, God, more generators? Watch out for the fan! <laughs> Watch out for the fan! Jump over it. You gotta jump over it. Look, there's a laser. You have to be Tom. You have to be Tom Cruise to jump over. Okay. One, two. Three. Oh, that was so Catherine Zeta Jones. Put your ass in the air to avoid hitting the laser brain. Put your ass in the air. You know that every poster for the movie Entrapment is just Catherine Zeta Jones. Ass in the laser. Okay. There it is. Okay, there ladies is. and gentlemen, we're in. We're in Tom Cruise's backyard. Approaching his secret Scientology fucking treehouse. That's a Simon fucking Pegg treehouse, man. Is up there. All right. Okay, dude. Let's God. get out of here. Have you ever seen a treehouse with a fucking Do we just climb the ladder kitchen? and knock? What do we do? I. It's too. Uh, it, you know what? Yeah. At this point. Okay. Staircase over here. I need you to. Oh, shit. Don't fuck it up now. I need you to get. I need you to get to, I need you to get it ready. This is it. This is the right. moment. So, okay, so, so. What's so, the plan again? I'm going to play, okay, I'm going to play okay. the original Star Trek theme. Listen to that. He's listening to the Ewok theme. The he is so one. fucking cute. Nub God nub. Damn. All right, shut up. Um, all right, so you've got this little boombox thing. I'm going to Bluetooth this. I'm going to play this thing as loud as it'll go. Modified iPhone, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. that will mm -hmm. disperse his atoms. Mm -hmm. This is going to play more frequencies than uh, a normal stereo can play, Charlie. Alien frequencies. Okay. Okay, it's going to bust him up good. Okay. Fuck okay, let's this. get ready. All right. No chickening out now, dude. No, no. Let's get this thing together. But if you want to just go up there and kill him and try that, that's fine. I'm dude, scared as fuck. we covered this, man. I'm Force frightened. I'm, I'm scared as fuck. Don't believe me, I could snap his neck like, like oh, a twig. That's true. I could actually beat him up, too, and that's not saying a lot. Tom Cruise could be anywhere, though, and he's unstoppable. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Okay. Tom Cruise is probably sleeping, like, 16 levels under this house right now, though, in, like, a deprivation tank. Like, in Stranger Things. Okay. Getting it ready. He's... Looks like he's got some kind of relic in his hand or something. Oh, Jesus. Like some sort of sci-fi control thing. Control the universe. What is it? What is that thing in his hand? He's just looking at it. Is it a phone? Is that some sort of weird phone? Don't know, dude. All right, All right, All right. get the get that. I will get this ready. Okay. okay, so I'm playing Star Trek. All right, let me knock on the door. Hold on. All right. All right. Oh shit. Okay. Okay. Let do. We just go up there. Maybe I'll think we're one of the Scientologists. Oh, that's a good. Maybe that's a good angle. All right. Uh, hello, Mister. Yes. Mister Peg. Yes. It is um, Mister Peg. It is uh, 
Um, we are for the Tom Cruise says to come carry to you home. away. Mr. Peg? Mr. Peg, this is the Tom Cruise help for you. Oh, God. What is that? Something just turned on. Um, I don't want to fucking scare you, but he's coming. And it looks like he, he has the, the Abernath. The what? I don't know, but the Abernath? Hi, Mr. Peg? Uh, hi. Um, Hello. This is uh, Bill Clare. I'm, I'm Charles Crabtree. We're with Pop Talking Aliens. And it's a podcast. We're... We're here to stop you, man. You, you killed Star Trek, man. You fuck, you fuck killed Star Trek. You killed Star Trek, man. We're fucking playing, you, dude. You killed it. You know, right when we needed it, right when we needed Star, we needed Star Trek, Simon. Honey. We need, we need Star Trek. It's seven six six four. Jesus, that's the code. So, God, you, you, keep, Simon, you know what? You know what? Keep, keep we got a lot of things going on with this world right now, and it really hurts my feelings. And a lot of people need. This. Listen to this, you son of a bitch. You evil bastard. You evil bastard. He's a, God, it's, it's he's, working. He's, it's working. It's working. It's working. He's fighting it. It's working. It's, he's trying to disrupt the signal, but I think it's working. No, he's got the hammer now. What is this? What is this? What, what, what is this? Bill. What is this? No, Where did the Star Trek go? Oh, no! Peg's got the Whoa. upper hand! Peg! Peg's got the upper hand! He's, no, he's winning! He's, no! He's, he's got, got the upper hand! He's disappeared! No!